The Plasma Caster is probably my favorite weapon to use in the game. I've been using it for quite a while now. The Plasma Caster is a pretty versatile weapon. It does have its pros and cons though. So we're going to go over those. Welcome to my Plasma Caster weapon build, ladies and gentlemen. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys my Plasma Caster build that I use on a daily basis. This is like my actual walk around weapon. So you're going to see that I use this quite a bit. First off, before we get into this, just know that you do have to have com basically completed the Wastelanders questline to get the Plasma Caster, that's where you will purchase the plans for that, or you get it for Minerva whenever she does carry the plans, because I have seen it in there a few times. So, rolling into my personal Plasma Caster, we're going to start off with perks. Uh, per these perks are very important to the actual plasma caster itself and it is going to help it give the damage and the accuracy and the vats utilization that you need to run this class efficiently. So first off it is a heavy energy weapon so that's a good thing to note. So I do have the three heavy gunner perks on for strength. Those are pretty pretty important they do increase the damage of the actual actual plasma caster so make sure you do have those equipped i also have the blocker perk on just in case someone runs up on me because because of the low fire rate with the plasma caster i do tend to take some melee damage sometimes so let's reduce the amount of melee damage that we take another vital part of this build is going to be the science perks science perks just like the heavy gunner perks are going to increase the damage and it just helps a little bit. So have those science perks on. It helps you with the crafting as well when it comes to working on this weapon. I also recommend having the batteries included. The energy ammo does get pretty heavy. So run batteries included. That way you're not having to figure out why you're overweight most of the time. I also run Nerd Rage because this is a bloodied build, so this is my bloodied Plasma Caster build, so it's important to note that it is, it is a bloodied build, so these next few perks I'm going to go over you need if you're running the bloody build aspect of it, that's going to be Nerd Rage, Radicule, uh, those are very important with the, uh, with the actual bloodied version of this. Nerd Rage, if you don't know, when you're below 20% health, your damage resistance and damage and AP all increase so that's pretty good i also have action boy because this is a very much a vats weapon a weapon that is really not as efficient if you do not use vats so i highly recommend using vats for this so action boy uh, i have adrenaline as well as gun fu so these are actually going to, like the gun food is going to make sure you lock onto your nets at VATS target once you kill your first one. And then adrenaline is going to, adrenaline is going to uh, increase damage uh, if you do kill enemies within a short period of time. So if you're trying to clear a room with this thing, adrenaline is definitely going to help a lot. I also have bloody mess and better criticals as well. Those are just, they're not necessary for this build, but they do help a little bit when it comes to uh, damage. And of course, I'm running my usual Super Duper Starch Genes and Class Freak, as well as Strange in Numbers if you are mutated, if you want to run with this class. The rest of the perks are interchangeable, completely up to you. Although, I do recommend Fireproof because Flamethrowers still hurt. Moving on to the actual Plasma Caster itself, what I have on it. So, the attachments that I have on it, I do have the Prime Capacitor. That's the one that I like. I don't didn't even unlock the other ones, and the reason why is because I wanted to convert it to Ultra Sight uh, to, for that additional damage to Scourge, but also it just does the most damage out of any receiver, as you can see. That 215 uh, damage and 215 energy damage is pretty cool. So you got the ballistics and energy damage. So you, it, this thing packs a punch. The range is pretty good on it, as you can see, sitting at a 228. That is because I do use the aligned sniper barrel. As you can see, normally it is around. It, the base is going to be around 120. The true long barrel is going to be around 204. I wanted that 228 because I want to be able to pick enemies off from a distance. I feel like that's very important with this weapon. Now, this is a weapon that does cost a good bit of AP, so keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to legendary rolls, there isn't one that I would say you need. Um, obviously, the bloodied one is going to benefit you if you're a bloody build. I have the vampires one just because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to heal. 
So that's why I have the Vampires one. I do have that reduced action point cost, which is really good because this is a VATS build. The Crippling one is okay. That limb damage, uh, plus 50% limb damage is okay. It normally won the two shots enemies, so I don't really have to worry about the limb damage all too much. But it's, it's nice to have when you're going against bigger enemies. One thing to note about this Plasma Caster is it basically is a ammo printing machine. Whenever you are out and about and you're uh, fighting a bunch of enemies and you're looting them, you're going to be getting ammo left and right because this thing basically prints ammo. It takes one to two shots if you have the right build on on the regular everyday enemy. Most of the time it will one shot them if you're warmed up and going and you're using vats and you're within a respectable range, it will one shot them. Because of that, the ammo stacks can drop 30 to 40 rounds at a time, so it is a great way to stack up on your plasma cartridges. If you're like me, and you like the Ultrasight plasma, as you can see, let me show you my inventory right now. I currently have 79.79 on here, but if I were to open my ammo storage locker, my Ultrasight plasma cartridges, as you can see, I have over 10,000. I did not craft any of these, the game simply just unlimitedly drops ammo for this plasma caster for some reason so if you're someone who wants to use a plasma flamer and you just are having a hard time getting ammo for it simply just run the plasma caster for, for a few times and that's a good way to get ammo of course you can get ammo for anything doing daily ops and expeditions but of course the plasma caster is going to give you a lot of ammo just regularly throughout the map so that's a good thing to note. I will say the cons of using the plasma caster is going to be the short fire rate. There are a lot of times to where I'm getting rushed by like ghouls and they're getting hits on me just because I'm not able to get a shot off in time because I'm still working on the one prior and there is like that one to two second duration you have to wait to fire the next bullet another downside of this is the actual ammo capacity it is only 20 rounds in a mag of course you could roll quad on it in my opinion that's not needed 20 rounds is kind of viable for this weapon but again if you're in like a heavy space worth a lot of enemies and you don't want to have to reload as much yeah the quad roll is good for you it really just depends on what kind of roll you want to go with it the pros of using this are going to be that it is extremely accurate with vats i don't miss very often if you're using vats it does have the tendency to one or two shot so you're not wasting a lot of ammo and as i said before it does basically print its ammo as well so ammo is never scarce for your plasma caster whether it's regular plasma cartridges or the ultra sight ammo is always in the area another pro this isn't really one that's <laughs> this really doesn't change the game at all but it is cool it does turn enemies in the goo sometimes i do have bloody mess on so it's either they explode or get turned into goo so that's pretty fun so if you just want to have a bunch of green slime everywhere because you know you just destroyed an entire house full of enemies the plasma caster will turn them to goo for you now the plasma caster does pack a punch i would say you could probably kill the scourge beast queen it would take a little bit of time but you could probably kill her over time by yourself I will say don't try to solo bosses with this thing because of the low fire rate you will probably end up being there for a very long time. You could probably do it though as I said you could definitely over time rack it up if you have the vampires mod on it like I do you're just continuously regain health so there's a chance that you won't have to worry about dying but like if you're doing scourge beast queen you're going to be swarmed by a bunch of enemies and you have that low fire rate so you're going to have a hard time fighting off a giant group of enemies at a time you if you have the vampires roll on it like i have you won't die but there is a chance that you just won't be able to actually accomplish anything you're kind of just be stuck and that's kind of what you want to avoid you don't really want to be stuck in areas i do recommend when you're using the plasma caster you're kind of a high ground type of build i know i've gotten comments in videos before asking why do i jump when i shoot um it this is the weapon that i do it for it's i find it more efficient if you're in like a small area with a lot of enemies to jump before firing and then nothing will block your shot so it's just kind of like it's just an uh, instinct at this point to jump, uh, take jump shots with the Plasma Caster. Alright guys, that was my Plasma Caster build. As I said, it is one of my favorite weapons in the game. If not my favorite weapon. I mean, it's my carry around weapon. It's what I use every day in this game. I call it old reliable because you can't really get away from it. it. 
this is always there it always is extremely useful it's just in my opinion one of the best weapons to use in the game just be just because of, just because of the fact that it basically never runs out of ammo it's accurate and you don't have to be point blank range to actually use it it's such an easy pick up and use weapon that anybody can do it once you're able to actually get into the vault after the wastelanders quest line to actually buy the plans so if you don't have this one definitely wait for minerva to come around or if you can if you have access to the vault to go ahead and spend your gold bullion on it i know there's so people are going to ask is it worth the gold bullion i say yes i actually paid full price for it before it was in minerva's stock so i would do it again if i had to it's a amazing weapon with a good roll it really is one of the best weapons in the game in my opinion Guys, if you want to see more build videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you made it this far. Guys, as always, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Deuces.